multiple swab samples from different individuals being tested for coronavirus can all be processed at the same time. So there's a limit to how many swabs can be included in the pooled sample. But even if you're only batching together five samples at a time, say, that means that you're saving a decent number of diagnostic tests in continuing to pull through time. You can see how quickly all those diagnostic tests add up. To give you an example of how this is being used in Wuhan, after about a month of no newly reported coronavirus cases, they had about six emerge in mid to early May. So in response to the, the emergence of a couple cases of COVID-19, in an attempt to stymie a potential second wave of infection, the city of Wuhan decided to launch this very extensive, comprehensive diagnostic testing campaign. There are about 11 million residents in Wuhan, and basically they aim to test every single one of them, as many as possible. Beyond hiring thousands of healthcare workers and spreading word about this campaign on social media, postering through it, verbal announcements on the street, all sorts of things. Wuhan accomplished the feat of already having tested about 6.5 million people within less than two weeks by using pool testing. And this was to both speed the screening process, but also conserve valuable testing materials. And I talked to experts this week about whether strategies like this could be applied in the U.S. for specific cities or at least for vulnerable populations, namely nursing homes, schools that are reopening, correctional facilities especially, places where we've seen outbreaks be an issue or we anticipate they could be an issue, but also among healthcare workers and first responders, all these people need extra surveillance because they are at higher risk. So I talked to experts about this this week and they indicated that yes, this is a good idea for the US and we should set up the infrastructure to be able to conduct pool testing. A huge caveat to all of this, the prevalence of the virus in a community has to be low enough that pooled testing is useful. What do I mean by that? If a pooled test, meaning it contains multiple samples, comes back positive, there's a retainer of those original samples, only part of them gets included in that mixed sample, and they go back and individually test each of the swabs included in that sample to see who among those tested had the virus. Now, if the virus is at low prevalence within a community, the majority of pool tests come back negative. So it's easier to triage in that way and spot exactly where the positive cases are coming from. If you have too high a number of positive cases, you have to then go back and retest so many tubes that it renders pool testing not very helpful anymore. And it's more efficient to just go through and test people individually at that point. So there is a threshold for the usefulness, which means that in places that are still very much in their first wave of the infection and are seeing a high number of new infections every day, it's not going to be a helpful measure for now. But looking into a couple months from now, when we hopefully are able to move about more freely, this is a way to surveil the situation and catch outbreaks before they run out of control, as we've seen happen in many places in the US now. So again, all this infrastructure needs to be put in place. The protocols for pool testing need to be approved by the FDA. Uh, some protocols have already been approved. There's one ongoing in Nebraska, for instance. They started doing pool testing quite a while ago. So, and there's another in California. So moving forward, we're hoping that this can become more widely implemented across the US and act as a surveillance system to catch new outbreaks of COVID, isolate, perform contact tracing before things run out of control.